Great. Awesome. Welcome to yet another inspiring episode of Star Tales. So Rama, let me tell you something. If you ever get annoyed with me, it's very easy to get me out of this room. And how do you do that? Talk numbers, statistics, Excel sheets. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> okay. Uh, but not today. Um, today we are going to talk to someone whom these numbers come very naturally and his journey has been a proof of how he has been playing with numbers throughout his professional life and is now a great entrepreneur, founder of Ruffin, a cloud-based B2B platform for all the logistical needs of, of shippers and truckers in the whole of Middle East area. Welcome Janardhan to Star, Star Tales. Thank you, Anil. Thank you for having us and, um, you know, for that <laughs> great introduction. And uh, we have actually now moved on from Middle East to Pakistan as well. So the, the territory has increased um, and we are very excited about that. Great. What a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. Anil. Well, Janardhan, from being a true number cruncher, that is an investment banker, to an entrepreneur now, and again from United States of America to Dubai, that I believe is a great journey and a transition. Would like to know your insights. Sure. So I think uh, when we talk about you know the movement from US to Dubai and you know uh, you know banking to entrepreneur, I think a lot of things have happened by chance in my life. You know, um, so I have grown up in India. You know, did my schooling there. I wasn't very smart enough to do engineering or computer science. Uh, so I wasn't smart enough, but I'm glad that I at least recognized that I wasn't smart enough, right? Otherwise it would have been a big disaster. <laughs> so I went to, uh, you know, US for my undergrad, did my studies uh, in management and finance and marketing. And then I had this bug to really get into Wall Street. Uh, you know, coming from a non-target school. So I attended Purdue University, which is an excellent engineering school, excellent computer science school, and a great management finance marketing school, but it's still a, not a target Wall Street school. So I had to really work really hard to get into investment banking, you know, the field of corporate finance, uh, you know, every, uh, you know, graduating student in business dreaming of you know working on wall street you know dealing high profile transactions m a capital advisory and i was fortunate enough to get an opportunity to work or start my career in investment banking so i started uh, with bank of america in new york then i moved to barclays in new york and then in 2009 and 8 we know you know the whole subprime crisis and when i look back last 10 11 years of my journey a lot of it has been um, now I'm able to connect the dots, right? Uh, the nine crisis happened. Uh, there was an opportunity for a lot of people to move around, you know, move internationally. Barclays acquired Lehman Brothers, and I was part of Barclays team. And we had to build our whole franchise outside North America. I was part of a potential transaction, which we then ultimately ended up winning of India's Bharti HL advising Zain Africa's, uh, you know, acquisition which was an $11 billion deal. So long story short, basically it allowed me to move around, travel, you know, spend time out of our Hong Kong offices, Dubai office, India office. And uh, what started with almost just a six month stint or a project based movement, uh, you know, ended up, I ended up staying here in Dubai. Uh, both my family and I, uh, my wife and I, we are from uh, India. So, you know, it's close to home. And uh, Dubai really provides you the best of both the worlds with Western infrastructure and Eastern, you know, uh, connection. Uh, you know, sometimes we joke about that it's almost the best city of India. <laughs> so we ended up uh, being here. I was still continuing with Barclays. I was spending my time uh, you know, working on various transactions, traveling around the Middle East, spending a lot of time in Saudi Arabia. And so, you know, movement from US to Dubai happened by chance. But I was happening, you know, working on a project. Uh, subprime crisis happened, things kind of shuffled around. Then movement from uh, banking to entrepreneur also happened by chance. End of 15, I was in a room with certain people discussing about, you know, logistics requirement in their own business. Somehow the topic came up and we figured out that how old school is the business, right? There has not been any innovation. There has been not uh, any upgradation in service levels. 
and that's where you know as as i started looking more and more into the opportunity and digging deeper into it certain things became very clear that if i don't do it someone else will do it and i just took a leap of faith and uh, jumped on it uh, and you know we we launched truck in 2017 and we have subsequently grown it across uh, various geographies today we serve almost uh, 10 to 12 countries uh, with physical presence in saudi in uae in pakistan now uh, and we are very excited so a lot of things have happened by chance and uh, i think it's always in the hindsight we go back and connect the dots awesome Awesome. Thank you so much. And I think this was a very insightful, candid, very candid, actually, very candid uh, response to the question that I've ever heard from anybody. You kind of covered my second question, but I would still ask it uh, because there should be one motivation or one inspiration that might be the trigger point for you to start trucking. <laughs> I think, look, this is a, this is a tricky one. um i think more than motivation it was more about you know as you start digging deeper into a subject or an opportunity mm -hmm. uh, it's not um, like you know for me at least i figured out that yes there is a great opportunity to do something and then i started doing more and more research starting meeting more people in our business you know we are a transportation aggregation right so we have customers we have transporters we have truck drivers the more and more you meet them uh, the more the idea got revalidated i kind of got sucked into it uh, you know you suddenly realize you are already doing it full time before even deciding that okay from tomorrow i'm going to do full time suddenly you realize oh i am actually spending full time on this and you become so excited about the opportunity or you know uh, you become so passionate about something that you almost got sucked uh, got sucked into it so i think um, if 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 one moment was i think you know end of 15 beginning 16 when we when the idea was incubated but then 16 was kind of nurturing the idea you know working on you know thinking through it revalidating many things and then jumping on it in 17 nice great so every entrepreneur have their own ups and downs at uh, times uh, some severe road blocks and what's your mantra how did you come out of it like Uh, how do you deal with such situations i think look roadblocks uh, as all our, of us would know it's a very much a part and parcel of the business right ups and downs are you know it's something which we cannot avoid for me i think um, what i have learned over the last few years is to become mentally strong i think uh, when we talk about grit i think it's an extremely important characteristic for any entrepreneur um you know if to be to remain persistent on something right um, you, you know persistence uh, along with grit and becoming mentally strong um, because as an entrepreneur you go through several lows uh, in a day sometimes and you want to look for that one little high that you get uh, you get right and you have to self motivate yourself right you wouldn't have you know a lot of people on a daily basis coming and you know who who that, that won't happen right uh, so a lot of times you just have to look for that one high which you get in a day and you know self motivate yourself and truly believe that you know grit alone would take you forward and i think that has been my mantra so far great awesome so i've met many entrepreneurs and you are one of those where you totally believe in technology and design so um i've seen trucken and every touch point in trucken you have implemented technology and not just technology you also truly believe in design how did you like how did you start believing in design and what made you believe in design look i think design for me starts from design thinking right uh, even when we thought about the business a uh, few years back the whole idea was logistics is a very unglamorous business how do you take this business which has been going on for decades in a in in the same fashion uh, and how do you bring that industry 4.0 moment in this right uh, and it starts from very much the design thinking uh, as a part of your strategy that how do you take something which was happening old school and what do you how do you innovate in your business model so i think design is is 
absolutely at the fundamental uh, core of how we as an entrepreneur or we as a startup want to approach uh, this sector, right? Uh, so that's how uh, basically the journey uh, started and, and the whole thought process around the design thinking. Great. So from FinTech, finance to numbers and then technology, how has your learning been? And um, today I see you as a very uh, tech hungry entrepreneur. So, and also um, you're one of those people who totally believe in technology. So every touch point at Drakken is so tech driven. So how, what was the learning like? I think, look, the learning has been immense, right? And more and more in our business, we are dealing with various stakeholders, right? Um, there are, you know, corporate clients, uh, you know, which are large companies. You have educated, uh, you know, people dealing on various departments there. Um, on the other side of the equation, we are dealing with uh, truck drivers and transporters who are working extremely hard, you know, who are uh, leaving their families from India, from Pakistan and you know, subcontinent coming here. And so when we think about what what their journey has been or what their journey is on a day-to-day -day basis, you want to think about with with the availability of technology today, how can we make their lives better? How can we empower them? How can we enable them? You know, a lot of people talk about startups being a disruptor. And I actually don't like that word at all. I am not a disruptor. We are not a trucking is not a disruptor. Trucking is an enabler. We are not here to disrupt anyone's business. We are here to enable people's business. And this is where the design kind of goes in as well. How do we use design? How do we use technology to simplify things, right? How do we use a complicated logistics module? And you know, with the help of technology and the right design, how do we make it much more simpler so that it touches to the very grassroots levels of people in the economy? How do they use that to their advantage today? A truck driver, he doesn't need to stand, uh, you know, in a 50 degree temperature on the roadside looking for a job. He can be comfortably sitting at his home or resting in the shadow uh, with access to certain applications and the design which kind of walks him through in a very simple manner, gives him an opportunity to figure out what opportunities does he have in terms of job availability. What can he work on? He, we are empowering him to decide and choose that. So, you know, when he goes from point A to point B, we are allowing him to come back with a load from point B to point A again or further onwards. So the learning has been immense. I think in terms of understanding the psychology, what drives people, and a lot of times the answer lies to the very fact that, you know, it's about simplifying things. Less is more, you know, and that's where I think the design and technology really uh, helps solve a lot of these things. So where did this learning come from, Janardhan? So did you uh, build products in the past? Did you deal with design in the past? We did. What, I, what, uh, what we did was we absolutely built products which were way advanced. And at that point in time, we focused a lot on our design process in the business, but not actually designed from UI UX point of view. Mm -hmm. And we learned our lessons very fast that sometimes you can come up with a great product, but unless it's, uh, it has the ability to communicate by itself, right? It becomes really challenging. And then more and more when you work with, uh, you know, transporters and corporates alike over there, you start understanding that here we operate in a region where we are dealing with multicultural background people. You know, people are from all walks of life. We are from all different you know, countries who are working here people speaking various different languages. How do you make a standardized design which becomes self-explanatory? So a lot of times a great product, unless you have a, a very simplified design to communicate that might not work. So the journey has evolved since then. We have learned a lot of things. And today we want to you know, put uh, you know, design first approach and then building the product around it. Great. So one thing that I've learned from you, Janardhan, is during this pandemic, 
I have seen people panicking about business, economy and all that. You were one of them where you were like sitting back and coolly building all the products inside <laughs> and you would make the best use of the technology. And uh, like how, how, how has the journey been in the last couple of months? Look, I think um, when this pandemic came, I think for everyone, this was that, you know, black swan event or the curveball, which came out of nowhere. And uh, for everyone, the whole idea was to figure out, you know, some of, some of the companies had to figure out whether they're going to survive, whether they need, you know, uh, support in certain fashion. And certain companies where we, like for ourselves in logistics, we know that, you know, this is, uh, this is very much in demand. We had to actually work even harder during the pandemic to make sure the supply chain is running. You know, the essentials are stocked up in the supermarket because to keep the economy running, so not to add another layer of panic situation. And uh, we understood that, look, either we can all sit down and, you know, be negative about it or feel really uh, positive about that. Look, this situation is going to pass, which we all believe in, you know, in the next few months, uh, this will pass. And during the time, we should utilize our resources and, you know, what's the opportunity that is available to us to take a step back, think through, you know, build products again, you know, uh, you know, redo certain things uh, from scratch, bring in new fresh of thinking. Uh, and we are working on that. And, and we, we have not thought, we, we are not uh, kind of pessimistic in our approach. We are very excited. Hence, you know, during this pandemic, we have gone and launched in a new country when most of the you know, people are kind of shying away from operating in their own country at the moment. So we, we have been very excited and I would think uh, we are very blessed. I'm also very blessed to have a great team around us. You know, it's the team which makes it happen. So uh, overall, I think, you know, we just have been very fortunate. It was great insights. What a beautiful journey from banker to technology and totally believing in design. Thank you so much, Janardhan. Thank you, Anil. Thank you so much for all the support. And uh, thank you, Raman, for having us. Yeah, great insights, honest answers, and uh, great 20 minutes spent for towards learning. Thank you so much for your time and energy and all the insights that you gave us today. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you Janardhan. Thanks. And for you all, stay tuned for many more.